Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are going to talk about my three favorite and best smallmouth bass fishing lures for fall bass fishing. This time we're in October, smallmouth are going to be feeding up, getting ready for winter. They're going to put on as much weight as they can to make it through the winter. A lot of smallmouth live in these very northern places and they get a very long winter so these fish feed aggressively for a month two months before the ice gets on the lake so that they can survive all, all winter long without really eating much. And we're gonna talk about those three baits that I really like to target smallmouth with this time of year. They're gonna be the ones you see on my channel a ton over the next month, two months, and we're gonna be catching a bunch of smallmouth bass on these guys right here. So if there's any one of these three that you'd like to see an instructional video on before the others, leave that comment down below. But for today, we're just gonna talk about the baits themselves, how to set them up, and how they're effective for smallmouth bass throughout fall. So my number one bait for smallmouth bass fishing throughout fall is going to be some type of crankbait. Specifically, these two I have in my hand right here, they're small bodied mid-depth crankbaits. And what I mean by that is they have a very short body, but they have the deeper diving lip on the front here, which allows this crankbait to get down a little bit deeper. So I have two in my hand right here. This is the Sixth Sense 250 MD. This one will get to about nine, 10 foot of water. Um, and it's a very fat body up front here, but it has a longer tail. Overall, it's a very small profile bait that these fish can get in their mouth. And one of my absolute favorites right here is the Sixth Sense C6. This one's gonna get to about four, eight foot of water, maybe a little bit deeper if you fish it on some light line. And this one has an even smaller body profile than the 250 MD. It'll get down to depth. It can get those deeper water fish. A lot of these smallmouth, you're not gonna be able to catch on square bill crankbaits and stuff like that up shallow. You will be able to catch some of them for a limited period of time on those baits. But for the most of the time throughout the fall, they're going to be a little bit deeper on some deeper points, some deeper current breaks. They're going to be near where they want to winter and feed up as much as they can and then not have to make a huge migration to where they want to spend the rest of their winter. They're going to be very close to where they stay all winter long. So these baits will effectively get down to where you're going to catch them. Um, on color choices, I keep it pretty simple. I'm either gonna go with a white shad pattern if I know those fish are feeding on bait fish, chasing shad, doing that kind of stuff. Um, a chartreuse is an excellent one if the water's a little bit dirtier or they're feeding on perch, that's an excellent one there. A lot of these northern smallmouth feed on perch as well, so a chartreuse color is excellent. Um, and I even mix in a craw pattern every once in a while. The water has to be very, very dirty. And what I look for in my craw pattern is a little bit of a yellow orange, not a solid fire engine red, and it has to have black lines on it. Um, it seems weird, but when that water's very dirty, that's a more vibrant color, and it can imitate a perch a little bit with that orangey and black stripe. Um, so I feel sometimes that gets me a couple more bites in some dirtier water. It's a color that you usually only see in the spring, but in the fall, specifically for smallmouth in very dirty water, that is one of my best crankbait color choices. And it's not one that you see thrown very often. But those are the two crankbaits that I like to throw. Those are the colors I like to throw. I basically, all I'm gonna do is cover a ton of water with these two baits right here and try and find where those smallmouth are, where they're moving around. They're gonna be chasing bait, they're gonna move fast. So this just allows me to cover a bunch of water and area to run into the fish that I need. And then once you get them fired up on a crankbait, they're usually they're in big schools this time of year chasing bait and trying to feed up. So if you get one, you can catch a ton in a fast period of time throwing a crankbait. My next bait choice here, these are gonna be my absolute favorite ones to throw for smallmouth. It's actually two baits, but they both will work to given your water conditions and weather conditions for the day. I have both tied on at all times and depending on what I'm thrown will determine which one of these I'm going to use. So the first one here, is going to be just a single swim bait. Um, I've thrown this one a ton. It's, I call it a finesse swim bait. You can call it whatever you want. It's basically just a little swim bait. Um, I use it a ton on my channel. You've seen it a lot. And all it is is a ball head jig that I pour myself. This is a quarter ounce head. That's like my number one go-to size. Anything between five and 15 foot of water I can cover with this quarter ounce size jig head. And I put a two aught hook in my jig head here. Um, that is all it is. I tie it direct to 12 pound test fluorocarbon on a light bait caster, or I will put it on eight pound test fluorocarbon leader on a spinning rod with 15 pound test braid. 
And then on my swim bait choice, I'm gonna choose through three different options here. I'm either gonna use the 3.5 whale, this is gonna be when I want a bigger bite, or when the fish are a little more active, that water's a little bit warmer, it's up in the 50s, even 60 degree range, that's when I'm gonna go with this whale. It almost is like a mini mag draft, and it has the head wobble that you see on a mag draft when it wobbles through the water, the head and the tail wobble. That's what this whale is gonna do. It's a little bit more aggressive of an approach. When those ones aren't working, when the water starts to get a little bit colder and the whale doesn't work as well anymore, the whale comes in a three inch and a 3.5. Usually I just like to go with the 3.5. The three is pretty small, but it will work as well. That's when I'm gonna switch it up to the divine swim baits here. Again, if I'm looking for that big bite, I'm gonna go with this 3.8 here, or if I know the bait fish are bigger, that's a little bit bigger presentation there. And then my favorite is going to be the 3.2 Divine Swim Bait right here. And what this is, it is a much narrower body profile than this whale. The whale has the fat head and the fat body. That's what causes that head wobble. This one does not have the head wobble that a whale does. So when you put this on a jig head, the only thing that's gonna kick is the tail. So this is like the number one bait I'll throw all the way up until winter, even in winter. I will slowly crawl this thing along the bottom in very cold water and just that tail will kick on the divine, give it just enough action to look like those bait fish that are just slowly struggling along in the cold water and it works amazing for smallmouth bass, especially in cold water. So that's my one-two punch there for the single swim bait. I'm either gonna go with the whale or the divine. And then the ultimate bait switch here, depending if you have, that'll work when there's no wind, it could be dead calm, no matter what, super clear water, that single swim bait's gonna work. But if you get the right conditions, which is going to be a nice cloud cover day, if you can get that, you can be sunny, it'll still work. The most important thing I'm looking for is wind and water in the 50s. I'm gonna break out this guy right here and that's gonna be the Alabama rig. So this one has divine swim baits all over it. I have 3.2s on all the outside ones, and then I have a 3.8 right in the middle. And if you've seen my Alabama rig video, you know why I do that. These are all white swim baits, basically for color wise, Alabama rig or my single swim bait. If I have dirtier water, I'm gonna go with white. If I have cleaner water, I'm gonna go with an electric shad. That's pretty much the only two colors I throw, but basically something white based in dirty water and something more translucent or shad color based in cleaner water. I will put blades on my A-Rig. I almost always use blades. It just adds a little bit of flash to it. Like I said, I'm throwing this when the wind's blowing anyway. So I want something that's really gonna stand out and try and get multiple smallmouth to come in on this school of bait here. So if these little small blades add a bigger profile to the bait and make it look like a bigger school of bait, you might get more than one smallmouth interested to come eat it. And then lastly, I have one eighth ounce jig heads on the top two wires, the middle wire, and then the bottom wires, I have quarter ounce jig heads. This you'll have to play around with depending on how deep and where you're fishing this bait itself. Um, I fish it usually, again, five to 15 foot of water. So that setup there with the jig heads gets it down to where I need it to be. You can go even lighter. You could go unweighted on the top and eighth ounces on the bottom. You can mix it up however you want. You can go heavier if you need it to get deeper. Whatever you need, this is a bait that you can vary up and really make it work. Uh, but it's the same swim baits. I just put it on a bigger profile bait when that wind blows to try and get a bigger bite or multiple if I can get the school fired up. And my last bait for fall smallmouth fishing, this is probably my least favorite to throw, but it catches more smallmouth bass than anything else. Um, and it's mostly my cleanup bait. It's something that I'm gonna use when they're not eating those reaction baits. If for some reason they really will not eat, but I know there's fish there, or specifically the colder the water we get. When that water gets really cold at the end of fall, 40 degree water temperature, this is gonna be the bait I throw because they really just don't like to chase things. That's gonna be a Ned rig. Right here, I have the new Six Sense Divine Football Ned Rig Jig Head here. Has a double wire weed guard and a one-aught hook in it. It looks like it's gonna be a deadly bait to use. This is brand new, I haven't even tried it yet, but there will be a video coming soon when I actually put this guy to the test, give you my feedback on it. But the, I think a couple things this is gonna do, especially since I fish a lot of river systems, you have this football-shaped head as opposed to the rounded head that m blends in with the head of the Ned Rig here you're gonna get less snags. It's not gonna fall down in those rocks as much, especially in those rivers. So when I'm fishing those current breaks, I can fish a little bit more naturally through there. Plus it has the wire weed guard. So I think that'll also keep me from getting some snags. 
And then ultimately that one odd hook, that's the same size hook that I put in my Ned Rig Jig heads I pour myself. So hopefully that will hold up to land some smallmouth. The biggest thing with a Ned Rig Jig head that you see in um, some of the other brands on the market, they put too small of a hook in it. So when you hook the fish, it skin hooks their jawbone rather than gets behind it and you'll have fish jump off and you'll, you won't know why. Um, we'll talk about that in the video coming up on this bait here or a Ned Rig video in general, what the hook selection does and how it'll land you more fish. But ultimately, I just use this bait to drag around in some current breaks or other rock pile areas or staging areas where these fish are gonna sit and they really do not wanna move. They're not gonna chase. It might be the perfect calm sunny day and there's not a breath of wind. This might be the only bait you might be able to get them to eat but sometimes it is the one they want the most and you will catch an absolute ton of fish on it. For my Ned Rig selection, I literally just use the Z-Man TRD and I could use it just in Green Pumpkin and that's it. Um, I keep it very simple on that bait right there. It, they're either gonna eat it or they're not. You're basically putting it in their face and they can't resist but to bite it. And then I just fish it on a spinning rod 15 pound test braided line with an eight pound test leader, seven foot medium action rod, super basic setup. It is one of my go-tos for smallmouth fishing and it just catches me a ton of smallmouth every year. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking about my favorite smallmouth bass baits for fall bass fishing. If you wanna see some other baits you need to be throwing for fall bass, especially even largemouth, go ahead and check this video out right here. And if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like down below and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching.